We're flying T-33s with a former Air Force pilot. I have a feeling I need a barrel roll at least. Yeah, yeah. you know what? We'll, uh, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Warbirds are alive and well in Waterloo, Ontario. I'm here to go for a spin in a T-33. My good friend Paul flew out here to join us for this one. You might remember him from our 737 sim adventure. He's a longtime supporter of the Flight Shop's Patreon campaign. Paul has an interesting history with the T-33, so when this opportunity came up, I definitely wanted to get him involved. On your flight suit, you would put your squadron on your shoulder and your next division up, in this case, the 21st Tactical Fighter Wing, and then your command here on your chest and then your name tags over here. So those are the patches that I wore when I was in the Alaskan Air Command, which doesn't exist anymore. It's now Pacific Air Forces. That was my T-33 unit there. Fifth Fizz, that was my squadron. It was an F-15 squadron and we were just attached to it as their targets. It's been over 30 years since Paul has flown a T-33. He's currently a line captain on the Boeing 737, and he owes a lot of his success to his early days in the T-Bird. Wow. Hello, gorgeous. There to greet us was Derek, T-33 pilot and director of flight operations at Waterloo Warbirds. It's been 30 years since I've been around one that flies. I've seen them in museums. I spent six years total flying this airplane, 1,600 hours. To be here next to one that actually flies, it's pretty special. The newest airplane I flew was a 1958 model, which is one year older than me. <laughs> so the big difference between these, this aircraft and probably when you flew is the power plant. Okay. It's got a Rolls Royce in it, so it's about 5,000 pounds of thrust, okay. which makes it a bit of a, well, for a T-Bird, a bit of a hot rod. As we all get acquainted, I can't help but feel a little anxious as I have one more surprise for Paul. The canopy is brand new then. I'm just gonna interrupt you, Paul. That's your airplane. What? We figured we'd get you one that was more American feeling. <laughs> you are the man, look at that. Just hearing the sound of that engine. Yeah. So this is just taking me back. So we'll do some formation flying. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too. Let's do it. Wow. Because when I told these guys that you had flown them, they were like, okay, I think we can make something special happen. Let's get another one. Oh, man. Is that ever special? Flying Ace Maker 2 is Greg Wired Collier, an airshow pilot that gets all over North America. Hi, Greg Collier. Greg? Paul yeah. Karsten. Nice, nice to meet you, Greg. Really appreciate you making this happen for timing. I'm Steve. <laughs> yeah, hi, guys, Steve. This is so awesome because Paul yeah. flew these 30 years ago. Oh, you did really? 30 years ago, yeah. It was an honor to give a little back to a guy who's been such a big supporter of Flight Shops. The sponsors are also a huge help with our productions. And in this case, shout out to iCloth Avionics for covering the hefty fuel bill. I'd hate to ask these guys what it costs to own these things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you want to know. I don't want to know. When it was fully fueled, it had 813 gallons. Well, let's go turn some money into noise. All right. I guess we need to brief. All right. Right here, yeah. my thinking was Stratford in London. Uh-huh. Can depart, kind of form up and uh, Figure get the airspeeds figured out, kind of straight and level out. Yeah. Now, this is the 401, the main highway. Usually for the jets, they like to keep us over the 401. Well, we can, speed. well, if you depart this, come out this way again, and we'll fly formation out, you know, and then we can fly around a little bit and I'll let him fly. I have a feeling I need a barrel roll at least. Yeah, yeah. you know what? We'll, uh, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be back there just to try and relive some of these ancient memories. It's coming back to me. Well, I'm, I'm feeling good to go. I'm, I'm feeling good to go now, too. I'll be ace cadet today in the ace maker. Aha! Success. You know, right? Air Force days? Mm hmm I said it's a good fit. Feels like home. I forgot how tight it was. Either I've grown, or I forgot, just how small this thing actually is. It's coming back to you.
Part of the briefing covered how we'd stay in communication with an air-to-air -air frequency, and I'd be running the secondary radio in the back of our airplane. What? Well, I'll monitor the tower on one. And then we'll go one, two, three, and four, you, five? And you, you and I could use... Oh, air-to-air? -air? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you usually use for air-to-air -air around here? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Is that usually pretty clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm good back here. You good back there? Yeah. I have control of the radios on one, two, three, four, five. The uh, comm and nav are both on power, which is yep, between on. That's, that's what I want on. Yes. Yep. On power. Got it. And finally, it was time to fire up the jet engines. Derek's monitoring the exhaust gas temperature because a hot start can really wreck your day. I stole that quote from a pilot friend of mine that I flew with in a previous episode. One on the ground, this is a Fox Shot Romeo Golf Alpha plus one. Fox Shot Romeo Golf Alpha plus one, one on the ground. Fox Shot Romeo Golf Alpha plus one on uh, apron three, two T birds. We're going to depart direct to New Hamburg, do some air work out there, and then we'll come in and do a circuit or two. Romeo Golf Alpha plus one, roger, runway 26, altimeter 3006, taxi via Alpha, cross runway 32. Squawk 1234, what is your plan altitude in the control zone, and what is the identity of the other T-33? The other T-33 is November 133 Hotel Hotel, and we're going to try to get to about 5,000 feet, Romeo Golf Alpha. Romeo Golf Alpha plus one, roger. Good to go. In the 90s, the Canadian military spent a lot of money upgrading these aircraft right before they retired. Okay. So it was really nice of them because we got beautiful cockpits. Ours were pretty basic. They didn't spend a dime on them. And uh, they um, were retired from the U.S. inventory in 1988. Ours had a, a J-8 attitude indicator and it was over here. It was a black ball with a line. And then what was right in front of you on the upper rank of instruments was the heading indicator. And then the airspeed. These airplanes are in pretty good shape. We got, uh, we got self start now on them as well. So, uh, the battery start? Yeah. ILS, <laughs> you are. <PDF. laughs> okay, canopy, we're going to park close. clear? Clear. So we're going to line up, wait for number two to line up. We're going to go to 65%, toe switch. We should feel a bump at about 10% minimum. And then we release the brakes, full power, and we roll. Roger. And we're going to try to get up to about 250 knots and hold it there so you can form up. And which instrument am I looking at for power? The one to the right here? It's on the top RPM percent. Got it. Right, top right hand side. So right now, what is it reading? Four, 39, 40. 40. Yeah. Romeo Golf Alpha, plus one tower, line up runway 26. Line up 26 for Romeo Golf Alpha plus one. Romeo Golf Alpha plus one tower, straight out departure, wind 220 at 16, gusting 21. Cleared for takeoff runway 26. Clear takeoff 26 for Romeo Golf Alpha plus one. There's bump. Yeah, 
Friday, that's awesome. The Flight Shops project is all about sharing aviation lessons and inspiring moments with the community. The Patreon campaign is a huge part of why we're able to do this, and I'm extremely thankful. I hope to be able to fly with more Patreon supporters like I did with Paul, and it's becoming feasible as we travel further afield to do these productions. So we're just right at 250? Uh, 249, 248 right now. Yep. Yeah. Kind of going lower and trail here. Can we get a good view of the bottom of your jet? Okay. Greg's extensive air show experience made this high quality formation flying possible. He flies Ace Maker 2 across the United States performing in air shows year round. I have a joint back up on your right side. Roger. Okay, we're in Lutar, Parker, Roman, Bell, 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 Plus One. And to the west, 3,900 feet inbound for a uh, break. I couldn't believe how tight that was. That was awesome. We did three feet uh, wingtip spacing. So it's like three feet back and then three feet laterally. Yeah because we would travel all over the U.S. in and out of clouds. So that's how you got through the clouds. You could still always see each other. Yeah, you just looked at that light. Sometimes all you could see was a red light. Wow. We're gonna do a break over top. Okay, you good? I'm good. You're gonna call it? Yep. We're gonna go about that break. Let me go about the rocket. After the break, we split up with Derek and I landing while Paul got to finally take control after 30 years away from the T-Bird. He got it leveled off, tracked to the south, did the communicating. This is your airplane, Paul. Took me a while to kind of get it from rocking back and forth. A little bit of this, and it got less and less and less. Once I had that, ah, now a little bit to the left, now a little to the right. Greg demonstrated a roll. and then gave control back to Paul, who did one almost perfectly after all these years. Please give Greg some love on social media. You'll find his links in the description. He went out of his way to bring this awesome experience to Paul. And while Paul was getting to relive his glory days, I got to try a little bit of stick time in the T-Bird myself. It was definitely pretty awesome. It's a pretty nice airplane though, eh? Oh, beautiful. Can I see what it feels like for a second on deck? Oh yeah, sure. Take control if you want. I got control. Take control. And you want me to head straight for a minute? Yeah, keep the altitude. Keep it? Yep. Yep, so right there. Yep. So we're holding about 160 knots? Yep. The enduring, there you go. Don't put a lot of G on because we're not fast. Okay, Roger. So about yeah. there. Is it more like uh, responsive when you're faster or was I people, just... people think they do really bad in the controls because it's so sensitive. Right. But until you really get used to it, you're just chasing it. But you're 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 plus or minus like 60 feet. Uh, it's a really good roll. Okay, we're at gear speed, so we're gonna put the gear down. Okay. Well, it's good. Oh yeah, so I'll pitch. You control. You're good. Let me go. I got it. Tower number two, follow T33 short final caution, wake turbulence behind. There's 125, that's exactly where we want to be on airspeed. Okay, I have control. You have control. We'll start pulling our back. Touchdown, I'll pop in into that part of the tower. Block it in, say your request, don't port your altitude. Thanks to Waterloo Warbirds, it's the only place in Canada that has four vintage jet types that the public can fly. Check the description for links, and also please do check Greg's links to learn about how you can fly a vintage fighter in the U.S. Uh, 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 uh,
Okay, brake check. Good. So cool that the canopy is like a speed brake. Paul and Greg landed next, although I'm sure Paul wouldn't have minded staying up a little longer. And as expected, after landing, it was tough to get Paul out of the plane. I have just, uh, I don't want to leave. I'm taking it all in. I don't want to leave. I'm just going to sit here a while and think. I told Greg I was going to be back in 30 years. Another 30 years, I'll be back. This one will still be flying, I'm pretty sure. It's almost undescribable. Uh, two things I wanted to do, we got uh, a couple of aileron rolls, and uh, we got to do the overhead pattern. And those were the two things I was hoping to get. And we got it. It's been really sweet. It's really good to be back. I'm just taking my time getting out because once I get out, I might not get back. So I'm really glad we got to do this. Thanks so much to Patreon supporters and the sponsors for making these productions possible. Please visit flightchops.com to join the mailing list, play the contest, and check out the back catalog. Really, the mailing list is important because that's the way we can reach you independent of YouTube's notification system, which is pretty broken these days. Anyway, until next time, Keep your flight chops sharp. Were you a Canadian Air Force guy? No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just a private okay. pilot, jackass. Okay. How many hours did you have in the T Bird? 1,600. Here, you're flying on the. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bucket list. Check. <laughs>